Today, from TIAA Bankfield in Jacksonville, Florida, this is Madden NFL 21. We'll see Gardner Minshew and the Jacksonville Jaguars taking on Baker Mayfield and the Cleveland Browns. Schmack dab in the middle of I-295 that encircles the city of Jacksonville in Northeast Florida. There's a good look at TIAA Bank Field. This crowd excited to see their Jaguars as both teams emerge from their tunnels a moment ago. We are just about ready for football as the Jags get set to match up with the Cleveland Browns. started and off we go from Jacksonville that'll be taken about a yard deep and they'll get him down right at the 25 yard line so the same result had he opted for the touchback the Jaguars ready to go offensively for the first time with Gardner Minshew former six round pick at QB it's pretty much become the norm when we see guys come out before a game and go through the route tree with their receivers I thought it was exciting for us to see the exact same thing happen in practice. He's, not, so, he's so meticulous, isn't he? He really is, and it's not. that tells me it's not just a one-time-a-week thing. They work on it all the time, trying to hone that fine edge. They want to see if they can get in sync and stay in sync in this one. Minshew, first and ten. And his first pass is incomplete. He was trying to find Marvin Jones that time. That'll bring up second down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. And they'll run it. This is James Robinson. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And force the incompletion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. An early tough test on the opening drive. This is third and eight. From the gun, Minshew to throw. It's a nine-yard gain, and it'll keep the drive moving. I'm not sure that that was necessarily a safety valve or a check down throw on third down. Sometimes just try and find the open guy and get him the ball. He did exactly that and found a way to pick up a first down. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Toss play to Robinson. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking. And that's from the offensive lineman creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, Run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. On second and inches, Minshew. He'll fight his man, LaVisca Chenault. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 38-yard line. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, 
Big time pass. A one-two combination. Looked pretty good. How about that? Let's see, if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 38. They run. Robinson. Big Andrew Billings there on the stop. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. Second and nine. Looking to throw it. Minshew. It's a short one here. Complete to his tight end. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns 26. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. Less than a minute to go here in a scoreless first quarter to this point. On first down, Robinson. And he'll be dropped at the 23 after a pickup of about four. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to huddle and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. To throw on second and six, Minshew. This is Chenault on the receiving end. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. 11 yards there, first down. We're scoreless we after one. Here we go. Second quarter now from Jacksonville, and it's the Jags with the football as they've got it with a first and ten. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know the securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. They're looking at a second and eight now from the 10. Minshew sets to throw. Now that'll be tipped and intercepted. Picked up by Denzel Ward. And he'll be brought down at his own 10-yard line. Here come the Browns on offense with Baker Mayfield, the former number one overall pick at quarterback. It's okay if I give him a few props right here. Do you mind? I think he's earned it. Go ahead. Okay, how about a guy who was a two-time walk-on, who later became a two-time Big 12 player of the year, has the most touchdown passes in Big 12 history with 129, a Heisman Trophy into his credit, and took his team to the college football playoff semifinal twice while at Oklahoma. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now, first and 10 from back at their own 10 yard line. Following the interception, Mayfield pressure gets to him and down he goes. Back at the four yard line. Malcolm Brown at three bills and some change comes in to drop the hammer. I think most quarterbacks would love to have the goal line actually extend up into the air and turn into a wall and they can put their back against it and know exactly where they are on the field so they don't end up in the end zone. Didn't do it on that play, but perilously close to the goal line. Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. And he's going to take this up past the 10 to about the 11. Able to pick up a healthy chunk of yards, seven-yard gain, but a tough third and nine upcoming. 
That was a good run, probably right on the edge of breaking into something really big. So the defensive guys right now are talking about, okay, what can we do to slow him down before he truly gets started? On third down, Mayfield. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived. And I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. Now a fair catch taken just across midfield, maybe by a yard or two. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. Now they were intercepted the first time they had the football, but now they get it back and it's still 0-0. And because of that, you know what the thought process is? Interception. What interception? It didn't really happen because they gave up no points. So go back on the attack. Go back and run the offense you believe will be successful. Find your playmakers and give them the football. Minshew going to lead up the Jaguars first and 10. Just shy of midfield at the 48. He'll throw from the gun. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. A reminder coming up at halftime, we'll check in with our Jonathan Coachman. He'll have highlights and analysis of the first half, and our highlights will likely be on the defensive side of the football here. Scoreless game. DJ Chark, the intended target, and it's third and short. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. This is third and one. Very likely four down territory, even if they don't get it, though. Now Minshew. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he will have a Jaguars first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. Third and short, blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And that was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Here's Minshew. Connection made with Chanel. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets it down to the 30 there. A gain of six there on first. Timing is everything, and they work on this cut all the time. They work on all the timing patterns, and this time it paid off for them. Worked him to the center of the field, cut it to the outside, ball's delivered, gets both feet down for the completion. And the ball on the 30, here's second and four. Again, Minshew looking to throw. That'll be caught right side, Chenault with it. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 20-yard line. We'll give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him, and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out, to the sideline, and make a catch. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. The ball popped in the air and intercepted. Picked up by M.J. Stewart. And nothing but daylight ahead. The 20. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Browns' defense has a touchdown. 
Ah, yes, the old tip drill works to perfection there. Ah, oh, you're bringing back great memories. You used to love that drill. And a lot of times in practice, you work on it not just one tip, but multiple tips, just in case the ball stays in the air for a while, to have an awareness and the ability to go up and grab it, and then you want to get some blocking support and end up in the opposite end zone. In that tip drill, do you what do you yell? Uh, for, for, for us, it was Oski, okay? Oski was an interception. different for different teams. Different teams have different ways of doing it. I've heard bingo, jackpot. The worst I ever heard, though, was Frankenstein. You don't want it to be a three-syllable word. Too many syllables, yeah. you, want, you want to get it right down and go. Oski is really the preferred word. Oski. It's up and through to make it 7-0 Browns. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. And following the pick six, and they have decent field position in throwing that pick six. We'll see how they attack this drive. And I think all you say to your guy is, listen, let's just take care of the football a little bit better. Make some better decisions on this drive, and they'll probably help him a little bit with maybe some really high percentage throws early to let him get settled back yeah, in. But they told him, and they told us, they've got confidence. That, that's not a problem. Yeah, not a problem at all. They just want to make sure they get things settled down a little bit for their offense and give their defense a little bit of a chance to rest. After the pick six, they go right back to the air. This goes to the tight end, Eric Saubert. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism. Great hand-eye coordination. Guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. They still need about the length of the football here, maybe a little less as they come up on second and inches. Now Minshew has it knocked out. Fumble. The Jaguars are going to go ahead and use their first timeout as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half. So they recover their own fumble. Now they face third and short. gun they'll look to throw it's caught Jones now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half Minshew on first and ten. Minshew going to be intercepted for the third time. Troy Hill picks it. And the return this time will go out to the 42-yard line. What a start defensively. Your offense goes out, gets the touchdown, and then you get the interception. Just perfect. How about the discipline that they showed on defense? Because after the offense scored to go up 7-zip, you would think they might be a little extra aggressive trying to get back at them. Instead, they read their keys well. When they took the shot downfield, they were more than prepared for that one.
good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their own 42. From the gun, Mayfield gets this to Kareem Hunt, his running back. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. So from the 36 now, first and 10. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. And he's got his man on the crossing route. That's Landry. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Mayfield down. Dancing to his left. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. And we're going to get a timeout. With two seconds remaining in the second quarter. So with two ticks left here in the half, on is the field goal unit. This is a 40-yard attempt from the left hash. And Parkey's kick is good. And that will do it for this first half. So we have reached halftime with our score 10-0 as we now go downstate to Orlando and check in with Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. We saw a strong first half out of the former Heisman Trophy winner, Baker Mayfield. His guys lead it by 10 as we send it back out to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Gentlemen. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Browns are going to get the second half kickoff, and they've got this lead as well as we are back and underway. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there. Call it the 26. Here's the Browns offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now, first and 10 at their own 26. He's back to throw here to start the drive. Over the middle and into the hands of his receiver, Landry. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and 10. They run. Chubb. 
And give him about five as he gets this up to the 48-yard line. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. They run it again with Chubb, and he's going to take this across midfield into Jacksonville territory. Call it a gain of four there, so it sets up a big play here. Third and a yard. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Third down, it's Nick Chubb. And able to pick up the first across midfield to the 47. Call it a one-yard gain of the play, and it'll result in a fresh set of downs. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything, because you're right. He's pretty much been completely neutralized. First down, they'll run with Chubb. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Now Chubb, and he's going to get stopped up quickly. Give him a yard down to the 43. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. And the line to gain here is the 37 on third down. Mayfield looks to throw. He finds Beckham complete. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. He was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he also picks up a first down. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. Under a minute to go in this third quarter as they come up first and ten. A first carry now for Kareem Hunt. A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. Second and nine. Mayfield quickly into the hands of Beckham. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. Give him 25 yards on the play there. And it's going to yield a new set of downs. It'll be first and goal when we come back. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. It looks like a jumbo set with three tight ends here for first and goal. Mayfield to throw it. 
And that's going to be caught for a Browns touchdown. Nick Chubb there to make the grab. And the Browns add on to their lead. Well, he wasn't the guy they were initially going for, but after going through the progressions, it worked. When you have plenty of people who can catch the football, you don't always have to go to your primary target, and sometimes that target is actually covered. Nice job coming off of that and getting it to someone who was open. And the man out of the backfield gets in for the score. He's got it, and it's 17-0. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it's capped off by the Browns' touchdown. Now after the score, it's Parkey on to kick it away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down officially at the 21. The Jaguars offense now heads back onto the field. And let's face it, this drive is not going to have any bearing on this game, but it's kind of important for one reason, isn't it? It certainly is. you got to get points. And okay, all right, I'm being facetious here. But you get points, you feel a little bit better about yourself as you move on to the next one. Minshew and the Jags now with a first and 10 at their own 21. He fakes the give here and looks to throw. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Credit that breakup to Greedy Williams. Too many zeros on the stat sheet thus far. No touchdown passes, no points for his team, but he remains undaunted. Still attempting to get his team on the scoreboard, firing the ball downfield. From the 21, it's second and 10. Out of the gun is Minshew. Throw left side, going to be caught by Chennault. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. 16 yards, a first down. Nice game there, partner, but you and I both know that won't do anything for the final score. They're not going to win this one. Right now, they're playing for pride and fantasy points. <laughs> and just to erase that goose egg, nobody wants to be shut out. So the ref takes a peek here, wants to see if the receiver had possession and both feet inbounds. If this were a college game, this would be a legal catch. It's the second foot that they're looking at to make sure it gets down. You have to have two inbounds in the NFL. Well, he challenged the play. It did not pay off. And that means he lost a timeout in that challenge. And as a coach, you hate that. Don't know if you took the advice of the player. You threw it yourself, but it didn't go your way. At the end of the day, it all comes back to the head coach. He has the final determination on whether to actually challenge the play or not. In this case, it didn't pay off for him. And that's got to be so heartbreaking. You throw that flag, you probably feel really confident. And then all of a sudden, boom, you lose the challenge. Yeah, when you take a look at it, you're throwing that flag because you believe you're going to be right. And when it comes back the other way, you have to regroup. Those short little routes probably going to be open. The defense, they'll let those happen, especially when they can make an inbounds tackle. Yeah, where's Coach Madden when you need him? He always talked about taking what the defense gives you, but sometimes you have to know when you have to take more. That was one of those situations. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. It'll be Minshew again. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. 
Picked off by Anthony Walker. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Browns' defense has a touchdown. That's the story of the game. They've been suffocating all game long on defense. They were suffocating there again in a big way. And they've done it not just by out-athleting them, which is often the case, but by being able to adjust to anything they tried to throw at them and beating them into the punch each and every time. This was a defense that was well prepared. Now Parkey for the extra point. And the lead is now 24. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. The Gardner Minshew and the Jags ready to go on offense once again. And unfortunately for him, this montage, not highlights, Low lights in this one, partner. Way too many mistakes, too many errors. Sometimes it's on the guy throwing the ball. Sometimes it's on the teammates, but it all comes back to him. It goes on his ledger. So when you're playing this type of a game, you start to look for other ways to get out of it. Do you throw it to shorter passes, some check downs, maybe use your legs a little bit more, don't throw the ball downfield. All those things you're looking for, and then you got to watch the tape and figure it all out so the next time it doesn't happen again. So far, the tape, four interceptions. They're throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. But we've talked about it, CD, but it bears repeating. They are struggling to throw the football. All the interceptions and more incompletions. It just doesn't look like things are in sync out there. I would agree with that, and it's not a good day when you feel like an incomplete pass is almost a win for you because it wasn't intercepted. And I think the receivers now, when they're running their routes, they want to catch the ball, but they also want to make sure that the defenders don't take it away. And they'll go back to Robinson. This time he's got him. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. The Jaguars on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. This is third and seven. The open man is Shark. It's complete. And he is going to have a Jags first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Minshew and Shark on the hook up their first down Jacksonville. Offense for them has been at a premium. You wonder where plays like that have been all game long. They're thinking the exact same thing themselves, but they're also looking forward now because now these plays are really for next week, trying to get some momentum going. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. Minshew, first and 10. taken down this will be a brown sack the number one pick miles garrett coming in to drop him well we knew this guy wasn't especially fleet of foot but he tried to conjure up some escapability but there was no way he was getting away on that one they're gonna need to get up and set in a hurry throwing on second and long Minshew caught out left side by robinson 
that might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get it out to your running back, and it could turn into a big gain downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short gain. So third and long, here's Minshew. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. What we've seen so far in this game, they are not going to allow a big shot over the top. You can have whatever you want underneath. They'll give you that, but they're not going to let you beat them deep. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. Now on fourth down here, that pass knocked away and incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and the Browns are going to get this thing back. Excellent field position. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. Ready to take over again on offense. Out comes Cleveland. And a few kneel downs should just about do it. Now, defensively, they do have all three timeouts, but very little reason to use them at this point. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. And again, it's Chubb. And he's taken down after a gain of three as they move it from the 22 to the 19. So Cleveland able to come away with the victory here. And this was truly a total team effort, Charles, on both sides of the ball. Well, they absolutely pitched a shutout, so it can't get much better than that, right? The defense led the way, but the offense did their part as well. They moved the ball up and down the field. So you've got to like what you saw. What do they call that? A total team effort? I think when it's time to hand out game balls, guys from both sides will end up getting one. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. With that, we sign off from Jacksonville.